Hey everyone, Crayon 2 is finally here. I've refactored everything, didn't leave any code alone. Uh, added lots of new features based on feedback and I'm excited to show you what I've come up with. The UI has been completely redone. It's in three sections now. It's got the selections where you select what we're going to work with, the colors which has the color palette, and then the actions where we're going to actually apply things. The major selections here are to be able to select something with the color that you're looking for. So uh, this color here, this is the only one that has it. Uh, and also if something has the same material, I'll just go ahead and duplicate that. I'll have it selected and anything that has the same material, it can select that as well. This is useful for when you want to color things, uh, do vertex colors by the objects of the same material. Moving on, we've got our color palette. So uh, I'm going to clear this color palette. Let's see, clear. Um, and I've got a few here, whether you want to use a grayscale or, um, you know, all the colors I've defined. Um, or what could be interesting is to select objects and then pull the colors from the, from that selection. Right, so if you get an OBJ and it has a bunch of colors already on it, you can select an object and then load the palette from the selection and you'll have those colors. So when you're using the color palette, you usually only want to have one selected. Um, I don't have it where it automatically does the select one for you because there are some operations you can do with multiple. We can get to that later. Um, but you can have one selected and, you know, just to, um, each one of them is customizable, right? And to quickly show the basic feature, we'll just go to set color and apply it, right? But we can add as many colors as we want here, set them to what we want, and then, um, you know, work with those colors. So, you know, switch color, I'm going to edit mode. Um, and we'll, we can just set the color for that face. Um, and this is where some stuff gets a little interesting. You see how it creates this gradient. Well, if I go to the shading mode, um, you can see, you know, obviously it has a different material on it. These, these gradients can be brought forward with a special uh, shader, which I have as the apply material. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that real quick to this one. And you can see that it, it brought that over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. All right. Moving on from the basics of setting a material, uh, we've got this exciting new feature that allows you to take a texture such as this and then bake it to the vertex color. So I'm going to do that real quick. You have these various bakes. You don't have to bake the texture. Uh, you can do combined, which will include lighting and a few other things. It'll come, it'll include emissive. If you've got emissive maps, um, normal will ignore the, um, the texture altogether. So will UV and position They're They're a little interesting, but they came for free. So I, I just left them in there. I'm just going to use diffuse. We'll hit apply. All right, and then let's go take a look. And you can see here that the uh, vertex paint has been applied from the texture. The resolution is based on how much geometry is on there, but you get this at uh, a lot cheaper of a cost than the shader. And, um, you know, it gives you a decent little preview in a, in a fast mode. Uh, what's also interesting about this is that it will export. Uh, if you export your OBJs or whatever, these colors go with it. Next up, we've got split by color. This is a new feature. Uh, it is not something that you can do normally. You can't, you can split by material normally, but you can't split by color in vanilla blender. So we're just going to select this, hit split by color. And now we should have 
uh, we should have uh, multiple objects. In this. There we go. So that this is a separate, uh, you know, separate color from the rest. Uh, I did duplicate those colors, and there's there's some tricks around if you want to um, uh, have them have the clean cutoffs. We can talk about that later. But um, that split by color functionality is there. Next, we have color by material. I'm going to come into um, the, the shader view for this, just so you can see that this has two different materials on it. And um, what I'm going to do is with the select, I'm going to hit load materials. And you can see the two materials loaded up here, right? The corrugated uh, is going to be mapped to black and the hex thick is going to be mapped to white. Uh, let's set them to something more uh, distinctive just so you can see the effect. That's going to be ugly. And we'll go ahead and hit apply action. We need to be back in the solid mode to see that take effect. And there it is. Anywhere that the material was done, uh, any, where those materials existed, it changed into these colors that does not replace what's in the textures. Uh, and you can do this across multiple objects. It'll happen for faces within objects, um, anywhere those materials exist. So that's pretty much it for the walkthrough. I hope these new features are useful to you all. Uh, there should be some artist videos showing how people can use it in their workflows, but I wanted this to be a good little walkthrough of features. Uh, as always, come to Discord and tell me what features that you'd like to see, changes, issues, anything. And uh, I'd like to see you online.